Let's have a look at this example. We're working with a second order differential equation and you can see that the dependent variable in this case is y, the independent is x. It is equal to a value of 6, which means you are working with a forced system or a non-homogeneous differential equation. So this differential equation, if we use d operators, you can write it as And we know that the solution, because you are working with a non-homogeneous differential equation or forced system differential equation, the, it is, the solution is made up of two parts. So it is your complementary function plus your particular integral. So in place of that y, you can write your differential equation like this. And if we rearrange this, you'll see you can do this. Now, we know that this piece here, from when we solve the homogeneous differential equation, this piece is equal to zero. So this is going to help you find what that complementary function is. And this piece, because this is zero, this has to be equal to six, because that way your equation is going to balance. So to get to the solution of the differential equation, we split it into two parts. First, you find your complementary function, and then you find your particular integral. So let's start with your complementary function. The expression in the bracket is your auxiliary equation. So we write that out. And from the homogeneous solutions, you remember that this, the roots of this equation is going to give you your complementary function. And you can work out what the solution is here for in your calculations, because that's going to be R and D equals minus 3. Right? So here you've got roots which are real and different. So your complementary function is going to have that solution. Right? So that's your complementary function. Now let's look at our particular integral. So for your particular integral, you are working with this part. So we now have to find an expression for ypi, your particular integral, so that if you find your first derivative and your second derivative and you substitute it into this equation, it has to balance, which means that your left-hand side here has to equal to 6. Right? If it doesn't equal to 6, then you've got the wrong function. So we need to find ypi. The first derivative and your second derivative. Right. So when we choose a form for YPI, it's important to know what this is, what type of function this is here. So you have a constant on your right hand side, right? So it stands to a reason that somewhere in your expression here you have to have a constant as well. 
what has to simplify to a constant. So we're going to choose a function. We choose a power function, right? So a power function is just a test function. And I'm going to guess that it is some kind of constant, right? You can label it whatever you want to, as long as it doesn't clash with any other of the letters that you've used before. So this is our Prowl function. Right? That means your first derivative is going to be zero. Your second derivative is also zero. Then we're going to substitute into this equation here. So we're going to get 2 times zero, 5 times zero, minus 3c equals to 6. which means you can solve for the value C. So C is just going to be minus 2, right? Which means that the complementary, the particular integral is going to be minus 2. And now we have the full solution for Y. minus 2, right? And that is your answer. Remember that that is your general solution. If you now have initial conditions and you're going to need 2, you can then find the values for A and B in order to get your particular solution.